on the street, supply chain constraints expected to extend far into 2022, with the Journal reporting major U.S. ports were forecast to handle the most containers in August than any other month on record dating back to 2002. So joining us now for the e-commerce impact is Robert W. Baird, senior analyst, Colin Sebastian. Colin, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, in terms of what morning. we're seeing with freight and cargo flows right now, what is the impact on a company like Amazon? How are you assessing that? Well, you know, for any business that depends on a strong Q4, the planning process starts very early in the year. And there's so many mm -hmm. unknowns in the global economy. And in particular, uh, with recently the increase related to the pandemic and the Delta variant, we've seen supply constraints in terms of inventory availability, uh, chip shortages, of course, we've all heard a lot about, but also ocean freight, transportation. Rates have gone up a lot. There's a shortage of containers. So for a company like Amazon or anybody in retail or e-commerce, that's proving to be a big challenge. You know, here are just four months left in the year. Uh, with with stock needed to be in warehouses on store shelves, so it's it's going to be a big challenge. I mean, I'll tell you as a consumer, I can't. There have been more than I can count on two hands uh, shipments that I have purchases that I have made on on that platform in recent weeks that have been delayed in some cases by a day, in some cases by multiple days. If I'm experiencing it that often, I would imagine others are too. So, how is this factoring into? your take on the stock, uh, and also not just Amazon, but other e-commerce players as well. Yeah, it's, it's potentially a big deal as, as we head towards the holidays. So for Amazon specifically, they do have a lot of their own ocean freight capacity reserved. Uh, they do have a marketplace where they can source inventory from a lot of different third-party merchants. So we're less concerned about Amazon than perhaps other retailers or other companies that, that are more dependent on on uh, traditional shipping providers or manufacturers uh, for product. Um, in terms of other stocks within e-commerce, a platform like eBay should do reasonably well in this environment. They have millions of sellers, so they can diversify where they, they source product that shows up on their marketplace. Uh, we also like PayPal in this environment. They fund payments, transaction values should be higher without as much discounting as we've seen in prior years. So those are a couple of alternatives within the e-commerce sector. Colin, uh, just in terms of Amazon's uh, potential for actually making a standalone business out of this logistics as a service, as it uh, has been called, the analogy obviously to AWS, uh, you know, something that Amazon created for its own needs and then can become a, a seller of those services. But is it not a little bit, uh, you know, kind of a, a less scalable business or one that just does not necessarily have uh, those kind of network effects as AWS does. I'm just wondering in terms of uh, as an investor in Amazon, whether you'd want to see this kind of capital intensive type business be a new growth area. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. The analogy with AWS is, is certainly valid, uh, but it does require a lot of investment in infrastructure in warehouses, in transportation. But the good news for Amazon, and they've already started this in the UK, so we're seeing it unfold uh, real time, is, is that receiving uh, fees from other parties for delivery, for transportation, that actually helps subsidize Amazon's own costs in delivering products same day, next day, or even within an hour. So we think when, the, when this does scale, it will help them from a unit economic, from a profitability standpoint. 